Hey everybody, this is Serious Drama, and this is a commentary. A commentary actually that I've tried to complete many, many times before, but I never have uh, been able to get through it. It's uh, just, uh, I don't know, it's, just, it's a challenging one for me to do, but I'm going to try to go ahead and get this done. Um, this is about my first love, and it happened my junior year in high school. Um, I met a girl. And her name was, her first name, it shouldn't matter. Her name was was Wendy. And she was a beautiful, beautiful girl. Um, she was actually half Asian. I think she was half Chinese and, and half American. So she had a very, very unique look to her. Beautiful, beautiful though. Um, she wasn't really easy for me to get as far as to kind of win her heart over. It took me a little work, which was something back then I wasn't used to, you know. I had to really kind of court her and... And, um, I don't know, kind of like hang around for quite some time before she was able to become like officially my girlfriend. Uh, but once she did, man, it was probably the best year and a half to two years of my life, really. Um, it's weird because I, I had girlfriends up until that point. You know, starting off in sixth, seventh grade when you kind of like, like girl and the girl likes you and... I don't know, you may like hold hands and hang out and it's kind of more of a symbolic type of relationship when you're that young where you're, I guess, boyfriend and girlfriend, but nothing actually physical ever takes place or anything like that. Well, mostly doesn't take place. I mean, you may make out or something, but it usually doesn't go any further than that. But uh, anyway, so it was my junior year in high school and her name was Wendy and she was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And... Um, nicest person ever, very bubbly and very much the type of person that just wanted to have fun and was very sincere. She was actually the first girl that I ever introduced to my parents. Um, she would hang out at my house, I would hang out at hers. And, you know, at that age, it was the first time that anybody has ever really loved me that wasn't my family. So it's a very, very confusing time. It's a very, it's a time that is very special in a lot of ways too because you're going to feel, and I felt, emotions that I had never, ever felt before. Now, I know the physicality portion of a relationship when you're that age and your hormones are kind of raging, you know, is a very important component to it all. But it was weird with this girl, it was different for me because the physical aspects of it were not the motivating factor. It was like, I remember when we first got to hook up or first got to know each other and get getting to know each other like it was almost the physical aspect was not even in my mind and that was really odd for me you know because you know I was a teenage boy so but I just it's, it was something different there was something different about her and our relationship relationship started off very well and it got rocky really really quick and it was because of those feelings of you know the first time you're ever loved by somebody like that you have this, for me at least, it was a fear of losing them. And the fear of losing her kind of overcame everything else. Where the relationship was destined to fail because of that overwhelming insecurity that I had, really, is really what it was. Um, she had it too, but for me, in my end, it seemed even worse. And we got into a cycle where, I don't know, like she was really jealous, I was really jealous, and it was a very, very unhealthy relationship where we would be in, in school together and, you know, I would get mad at her if I saw her even looking at somebody else, you know, and she would get mad at me if she couldn't locate me, if I didn't call her as soon as I got home from school. I mean, it had all the beauty in it, and it had all the first times in it but it had also the ugliness of a relationship too that you may run into. I remember she had a certain sense of making me feel so good about myself and yet at the same time so bad about myself. And it just fed into the insecurity of the relationship so very much. Um, let me give you an example. Um, during that time, it was probably one of my most awkward physical times of my life. I guess that's when I was going through like puberty at the most dr dramatic stage where, you know, you see first, you know, you, I was like a, to me, I felt like I was a pimply faced, you know, teenager, you know, and, um, and she would tell me things like, you know, 
Randy, you know, I don't care what anybody says. To me, you're the most beautiful man in the whole world. And it's a nice thing to tell somebody, right? But I would kind of focus on, what do you mean you don't care what anybody says? Is everybody else saying that I'm ugly and, and you don't think so? Or She would have a way of complimenting me in which kind of like insulting in a way too. I don't know how to explain it, but it just fed into the insecurity of the relationship. So we got into this cycle, or I really did, where I would seem like I would break up with her every week. Um, never really meaning it though. I mean, I always knew that I wanted her back. But it was kind of like I enjoyed her, the chase that she would give me to get me back. And it was a, hor it was a horrible thing I would do. It was, it was a very abusive relationship now that I think about it. That's definitely something you shouldn't do. You shouldn't play with people's emotions. But I think it went back and forth. We did it to one another. And uh, I guess in a way I enjoyed that um, knowing that somebody wanted me back or loved me so much they're willing to do whatever it took to get me back type of situation. And it sounds terrible and I know. But I guess the reason why I'm telling you this story is because I want you guys... Well, anyway, let me finish off the relationship here. Um, you know, the, the weird thing about women is, and I don't care what age they are, or girls or, or young women, is that girls do not mess around, okay? When I say that is, a guy will play with a girl's emotions. He'll break up with her with, with no intention of actually really breaking up with her. He'll play games. When a woman decides she does not want to be with you, she means it. <laughs> so be very, very careful in the games you play and how far you take them. You shouldn't play games with anybody's emotions, but sometimes you get into a cycle and it's really hard to stop. But let me tell you, I must have broke up with, with Wendy, I don't know, 30, 40 times. And um, she would beg me back and I would say, okay, I would get back with her, and blah, blah, blah. Well, the day she broke up with me, and I... She meant it, and it was just one day pretty much out of the blue. She, I guess she had it with my crap and broke up with me. And I could remember begging her back and t telling her, Wendy, do you remember all the times that I broke up with you and, and you cried and begged me back? How come you're not you know, coming back to me when I'm begging you? And she just, it didn't matter. It, that's not the way it worked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, years passed, probably... 15 years passed or 10 years passed and I can remember talking to a friend of mine and uh, we were I was single at this time and um, I can remember telling him man I wish I could find a girl like Wendy again you know somebody where money didn't matter where what kind of car you had didn't matter because all Wendy and I did was walk everywhere together we didn't have any car we didn't have any job we were just high school students and um, it's kind of like that unconditional type of love where nothing else seems to matter. All you care about is talking to this person on the phone all day, all night, hanging out with them every single weekend, walking them home from school, picking them up before school, and just so many different components that in grown-up life, you know, come into being, weren't didn't exist. But anyway, I remember my friend telling me at that time, he saw, Randy, that love doesn't exist when you're our age. I guess at the time we were like 20, or early 20s or so. And he's all, that type of love is, is, is childhood love. Um, you know, he's all, at our age, we got to look for people that we want to marry and that we want to have a family with. It's going to be good mothers, you know, good mothers to our children. They're going to have a career. They're going to help us better our lives. And I was like, man, you know, that sucks, you know. I wish I could just love somebody for for who they are and get rid of everything else, get rid of all the external things and and stop worrying about who's best for me and who's best to create a family with. So I did I came to realize at that point that you know your first love is really your first love. You're never ever going to find anything like that again. Um, that relationship and the way I treated Wendy and haunted me for years, 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 years. Um, where I, in my heart, I always said, if she, if I ever ran into her again, it didn't matter who I was with. 
I would always go back with her. I mean, it was a very immature thing to say, I know. But that was the feeling, the tr honest to goodness feeling that I had. It was the one I let get away. And um, it was a painful, painful breakup. Um, recently I had said that I never had felt depression. Well, I was wrong. Because I was depressed over that. Really depressed for probably about five months. Um, took me years to get over. Years. Because I had every intention of one day like marrying this girl having a family with her. She was the love of my life. I mean, it was weird. Um, but that, that was a very golden time. And I guess some of you guys are either in relationships or are going to be very, very soon. And it's going to be your first love, maybe. And I just want to tell you, you know, focus on what's good about it. You know, try hard not to let your insecurities... Because you're going to feel things you've never felt before. But... Don't let those overwhelming feelings mask what's good. Treat her good. Or if you're a girl, treat him good. You know? Um, because that's a time in your life you're going to, 20 years down the line, 30 years down the line, you're going to go back and look upon as a very, very special time. And uh, I blew it, <laughs> pretty much. Um, if I ran into Wendy today, would I dump my wife and go with her? Absolutely not. But that took years and years of, uh, of kind of, uh, you know, I love my wife and I loved people after Wendy. And, I lo I, you know, I've been in relationships since that first love, but none of them were quite as intense as the very first time. So that's a little story. Um, I guess it's the good, the bad, the ugly of a, of a, of a first love. And um, I don't know. It, it's, it makes me smile to think back on it, and I don't know, it was, it, was a, it was a great year and a half to two years, something that I would, uh, I often reminisce about, and uh, I don't know, that kind of love that you have, and again, I'm going to say, is so, so, so special. It only happens once, and cherish every moment of it once it happens to you. Try to remember this Call of Duty commentary, and and. and and, and think about what I'm saying because uh, it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be very, very sad ultimately. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe you guys will, will marry your first love and go on and have a family. And I can't imagine anything being better than that. Imagine marrying your first love where you know their background, you know their history because you are their history. Uh, that must be a wonderful, wonderful thing. But this has been Serious Drama. I hope you enjoyed this commentary. Be kind, be good, be safe. And I'll be talking to you real soon. Goodbye.